Welcome to this week's walk and talk from Portugal. All right. <laughs> Good. So Kristin's going to walk on ahead. We are in the Algarve this week. A couple more days and then we are heading off to location number two, which is Porto in the north. But we've got a lot to talk about today. I think it's going to be an interesting one talking all about the UK, USA, and how we're just seeing this ongoing <laughs> collapse, I guess we can say, just constant, constant destruction from within. So I hope you enjoy the surroundings today. It's quite busy, actually. There's a lot of people around. So this was the quietest area that I could find here. So firstly, we're going to talk about UK, then we're going to talk about USA. Um, we've got a money-making scam that's going on. Uh, we talked about this a little bit before with the ULES, which is pretty much certain now. Um, theft, AI, facial recognition. Uh, we've got cars, energy, housing. So we've got a lot to talk about today. So let's get into the first article then, which is, we'll start with the UK stuff because this is pretty easy to just get through. And then we'll go into the more difficult stuff. So. The first one then is UK government embraces facial recognition. And by the way, very quickly, apologies for the sound yesterday on the live stream. With correcting and it's one of those things when you try and please everyone, you uh, eventually end up with major issues and can't please anyone. So yesterday we had a couple of little issues with the sound breaking up. I think I've probably fixed it now. I had to do a lot of changes. But that's unfortunately the thing when we're traveling, that it's never gonna be perfect video, perfect audio. Um, and that's why I usually compromise with lower quality video and audio. But um, we'll see, we'll, we'll, we'll try it out. So apologies yesterday for that. But okay, first article then. The UK government is intensifying its use of LFR, uh, live facial recognition technologies, despite privacy concerns contrasting with the EU Parliament. So they're taking a lot of their advice now from the EU Parliament and some US cities. Oh yes. And the UK government is aiming to make the UK a leader, a global leader in AI governance. So they've just got this conference going on at the moment. We'll mention that in a second. Um, but there's also plans to dismantle this BSCC. So this is the Biometrics and Surveillance Camera Commission. I don't know if you recall a while back when I talked about the WEF and their centers for the fourth industrial revolution. And the person, the journalist interviewed the lady who was head of that. And he basically said, well, who has oversight? Who has, uh, you know, who's checking all this stuff? Who's making sure that there isn't any corruption and people's data is being stored correctly and all this. And she basically said, oh, well, uh, we're doing it. And it's like, how can you, how can you monitor, you know, your own data protection and, and things like that and making sure that no one is, you know, using it in a bad way? So that, I think, is one of the main, main issues with that. So now it looks like that might be dismantled. There's a lot of talk about dismantling this. But we've also got this new uh, authoritarian trend in the UK, which is the online safety bill. We've talked about that already. Draconian in nature we've also got the eu bill as well funny that they came out at exactly the same time oh and the canadian one. Oh, and the usa as well all to protect you from tiktok yes the chinese spyware tiktok that's what all of these bills at exactly the same time are for oh get the sunglasses off a second here and um the other thing was the ai conference that's happening at the moment so it's a uh, being led by the UK and Rishi Sunak is, uh, seems to be chair of all of this and pushing everything. Now we've already talked about his connections with Infosys, or should we say his wife's father, his father-in-law, who is uh, responsible for a lot of this stuff. They stand as a family to make billions from all of this. So it's obviously in Rishi's best interest to, I mean, I've never heard of a, a prime minister before being the chair and overseer having, you know, senior oversight of all the AI stuff and uh, CBDC and all the other, you know, stuff. It, it's quite interesting when you look at it. And, and as always, you just follow the money on these things. 
Now, the other thing that's a bit strange about it all is if you look at the um, AI Summit and what Sunak's talking about, he's talking about all these um, regulations and things that they've got to put in place over AI. And we kind of knew this was going to happen anyway. And even Elon Musk is, in fact, I'll tell you what Elon Musk said that was pretty interesting. So a day before the actual summit, he said that AI could lead to the extinction of the human race. And this could happen extremely quickly if it escapes. So I was just thinking about that. And there was a movie, I made a note of it. It's called Transcendence. I'm pretty sure it was Johnny Depp. It's been years since I watched it. I think it was when it first came out. And I guess get the sunglasses back on here. And if you've seen that movie, you'll know that the AI pretty much escaped and they couldn't, they couldn't control it once it was out. And it started doing all this pretty incredible stuff, really. So that's the one thing that is a bit concerning with it all is that if it does escape. So I think they're going to try and stop us from actually using the AI. That's what I think is going to happen. They release it to the public. They say we can all use it. We start using it and, you know, making our lives more efficient. And then what they're probably going to do is actually then say, oh, actually, you can't use this AI anymore. It's too dangerous. Um, the public could use it for, and they've talked about things already like viruses, cyber attacks, taking down entire, you know, governments and all this sort of stuff that they're talking about, bioweapons. So it's pretty obvious what they're doing. They're going to take control of it, just like the government do with a lot of other things. Let's talk about the ULES expansion then. So we've talked about the ULES before, this, what I think is just a massive scam in London under the London Mayor Sadiq Khan. And we've just got some statistics out. They made 26 million pounds in one month alone. It's just absolutely staggering. And it says, and this is in the media as well, it says under the guise of reducing pollution from older vehicles. So even some of the media are against this. And again, I've gone through different media sources to get a balanced view. But one thing that it said, which was absolutely staggering, was it's cut down the number of older polluting vehicles by 45%. So I thought, okay, let's see the stats on this. Was there any? No, none at all. So I had to find some of the media articles and go onto the website to find out what this 45% older vehicles was. Did it mean older vehicles? No, it meant non-electric vehicles. That's just a marketing tactic. That doesn't mean that they're older vehicles. It, it really just meant that they were non-electric. So they obviously want everyone to get um, electric. And again, I've said a lot of times, I'm not going to get electric, not until I'm absolutely forced. I've seen so many of these videos now of these electric vehicles, you know, blowing up or going on fire. You've even got ferries. Is it Norway? The ferry company that won't allow electric vehicles on the ferry now. So there's a lot of, you know, stuff going on around these electric vehicles. And they are deliberately forcing them onto people, whether people want them or not. And that's not really capitalism when you force something onto people where there may not be that demand for the product. Now, the other issue with the whole ULES stuff and the whole premise behind it is to reduce pollution for Londoners. And if you look at the study that Sadiq Khan funded, uh, it shows a 90% reduction in pollution, right? So you might say, oh, great, 90% reduction. But if you look at the independent studies, they actually say that it's more like 5% reduction. So they're basically saying that why are we doing this whole thing and causing all these issues for people over a 5% reduction. So to me, it's obvious what's going on. This is just a huge money-making scam. That's, that's all it is. They just want to make money. And it's obvious because now we've got all these other cities around the UK. We've got these cities around the world, mostly in Western economies, all implementing or doing tests on the same thing. So they usually start by saying things like, um, oh, you know, a survey on how clean is the air in your area. Right, they do things like this. How clean is the air in your area? Oh, we got some noise behind. I even saw a little survey came out for the Isle of Man the other day. 
talking about clean air. Are you concerned by the pollution in the Isle of Man? And I'm thinking, what idiot put this, this survey out? The Isle of Man is windy, right? So as soon as the wind blows, any little pollution that may have come up has gone. It's gone into the Irish Sea somewhere. So it makes me wonder what they are planning for the island here. So expect more of these schemes anyway to go around. More money <laughs> being sucked out of people's pockets and into the government pockets. That's one of the things with the government. Once they get hold of new ways of taxation and penalties and all these other things, they never let it go. You know, think about sales tax and VAT and all these other things and even income tax levels, which remember were only a temporary measure for times of emergencies. And now these things are permanent. They never go away. And even with government, we'll talk about government in a moment, but it used to be that people would go into government because they wanted to help and they wanted to serve. Now most of these people in government are millionaires. You know, they didn't used to be that way. Now let's talk about another thing in the UK then. And this is car insurance premiums. So it's absolutely skyrocketing. It's up 48% in the 12 months to June of 2023. Insurance for Range Rovers have skyrocketed in London due to a surge in vehicle thefts, making them extremely difficult to insure. Now there's a statistic on one called the Range Rover Villar R Dynamic HSC. HSE, and it's become virtually uninsurable with the premium starting at £20,000 a year. Who on earth is going to pay that? Now, you might wonder why the premium is so high on that. And it's because one in two of these vehicles are stolen. This is what the statistics say. Whether that is true, I am not sure. Pfft. But um, that's what it says. One in two. I don't know about that. We'll have to check that. But it does say that one in ten... Range Rovers are now stolen in the UK. And you might think this is isolated to the UK. It's actually not. It's also in the USA. Let's jump across to the USA now then. Subprime auto loans in America has got a major issue at the moment. So the average payment is over $1,000. Who on earth is paying over $1,000? <laughs> Many of you are probably going to drop a comment here. I am. Gosh, $1,000 for a car payment now, average in the USA. And we've seen delinquencies rising from 7% just three years ago up to now 17%. So delinquencies up 10% in the last three years. And one of the biggest search terms is give car back now on Google, which, you know, is not really possible. You can't just give a car back. That is, you know, classed as a repossession. But in fact, car theft in DC is now so bad that the mayor and the Metropolitan Police Department have launched a taxpayer funded initiative to add digital tracking tags to vehicles. Okay, I'm not sure where to go here. Let's go, uh, let's go to the left, to the beach. So why are they launching this then? Well, because vehicle theft has gone up by 101% in last in the last year just in 2023 and the mayor uh, as well as facing you know these huge crime rates is claiming that this is nothing to do with the uh, stance on defunding the police apparently this is just a coincidence <laughs> yeah of course it is absolute coincidence of course okay let's take a walk on the beach here then i don't know where kristin has gone She's a, she's, she's a pretty fast walker, so she just disappears a lot of the time. So this one then, IRS audits on, it says, this one made me laugh about it. It said, it's only going to be on people and families that earn under $400,000 per year. So don't worry about it. It's just people that earn under 400000 a year. And of course, no one ever looks at the stats. So I pulled up the stats here and I found out that it's, it's only 1.8% of all American households earn over $400,000 per year. So in effect, it, it is pretty much everyone really. And what else did we have then? Another statistic, in the previous past, I don't know exactly what day, only 1% of Congress 
were in the highest earning income brackets, you know, what you could say millionaires today. Today, over 50% of Congress are millionaires. Yes. So what's this article all about then? Well, they want to raise an additional $80 billion because of the deficits and everything else and the debt levels from the citizens of the US. So that means many of you. So they're going to be um, hiring more agents. They're going to be using more AI to look into your tax returns to make sure you haven't been dodging your taxes and there's going to be hefty penalties and prison sentences and all this if the AI you know, finds this stuff about you guys. So really, what are they doing? Well, they're just looking for ways to plug their own holes, these problems that they have created by creating too much debt. So that's exactly what it is. And this happens every time to every civilization. Services drop and politicians become more corrupt. So this is all that we've got to look forward to. Now, another scheme that's been very heavily criticized at the moment in the US is what Biden is taking credit for. So it's called a $45 billion program to convert office space into affordable homes. Now we all know that they're not going to be affordable homes. They're right in the center of cities. And there's, there's pros and cons on both sides. A lot of people have got a, you know, opinions on it. Some people think it's the worst thing in the world. Other people think it's the best thing in the world. I kind of sit in the middle on this, but giving taxpayer money to developers to build these affordable houses for the government, it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. But there's one thing for sure, and that is that some of these office blocks, they do need to be converted. So I will say that as a, as a pro for this program, they do need to be converted because these offices are never going to come back. The companies are never going to go back. Too many people are working from home now and all the other things around it. So it makes sense to do it. Now, I was involved in a conversion, uh, which was a factory, a big factory to apartments in the UK many years ago. And there was a lot of challenges with that, which we, you know, it, it was quite, it was a quite a difficult thing to do because if you build accommodation for people, right, right off the bat, then you're working with a clean slate is quite easy but retrofitting these massive office blocks or factories and things like that, it's doable, don't get me wrong. If you're a developer, you know it is doable, but it is a lot harder than just building from scratch. And all this money is being allocated from the green fund, renewable energies and all this. How exactly they're linking that together with renewable energy, I'm not sure. But again, they are paying for this in a very underhand way because this, what they're also doing, um, this was another article that just came out, and it's all about the energy standards for household appliances, which this survey says is going to cost American households over $9,000 per year. Again, I've looked at this and read through the report from the Watchdog Group. I'm not exactly sure if their figures are um, quite correct, but they're talking about $9,000 per year is going to cost people. So what is this all about then? Well, it's about making appliances more efficient and the costs range from $50 for a small appliance all the way up to $2,800 for a larger appliance. Look, there's Kristen. She probably went off to get some ice cream. I can see her in the background now. So there we go. The appliances are going to cost a lot more money because they have to become more energy efficient. And then the last one, then we always do a little bit of a weird one at the end or a controversial one. Well, the, this is the title, activist district attorney for the Bay Area who's been responsible for a lot of criminals getting off charges, as the article talks about, was robbed herself. And it says that after an hour of waiting for police, she became frustrated because the police didn't turn up and she eventually filed a crime report and criticized the police for their response. <laughs> oh, the irony of that situation. That is called karma coming back around, I believe. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the walk and talk today from Portugal here. We're gonna take a nice walk now, get some food, 
And uh, apart from that, thanks for being members here, subscribers here. Take care. God bless you guys. God bless your families. And I'll see you next time for the next video. Bye for now.